Month. And so for those of you who don't know what Vision Month is, Vision Month is our time that we do in every January since the conception of our church. It is a time where we give the word of the Lord for this coming year and cast a vision on what God would have us to do. That's why I want you to be here for team night this Friday. I got some things to share with you as we get ready for this year and what's going to come ahead. Uh, there's some good things um, coming down the pipeline and you need to know what's going on at your church because you're a partner here. You have some investment. Amen. Amen. So it's important for you to understand what you're investing into and where we're going forward. Amen. But I want to give you the word of the Lord. Pastor Dom did all of the uh, hermeneutical and exegesis last Sunday. I'm not doing that this Sunday. He laid the foundation for what I was going to do last Sunday. So I want you to understand we're going back to Isaiah 60. But I want to I want to break open specifically the word of the Lord. And I want you to take notes. I need you to hear what I'm going to tell you. Amen. Concerning this year. And, the, and not only that, but a little bit of what understanding what you're going to see in 2025. Amen. So, um, again, before I get into this, let me lay some, let me lay the premise behind everything for a second, all right? First, let me start with doing this. Um, I wonder if you put this in here for me. First Corinthians 13, verse 9, it says, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. When we give, when we talk about prophetic, what the word of the Lord is, I'm talking about for our church specifically, unless God gives me something. Uh, that is uh, general, broader, in the sense of the church at large. Um, there's a little bit of that that you're going to hear in there, but I'm going to speak directly to us. Amen. And so when we talk about expressing, what we're doing is expressing the heart and will of God for a particular person or people for a specific time or season. All right. It is, the, it is also a time where we seek God for direction for this coming year and renew our commitment to his will and plan for our lives. The reason why I gave you 1 Corinthians 13 verse 9 is, is that, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. That means that when we give, God is giving me the part that I'm supposed to share for this body I'm called to. All right. And those who are connected to our, our, our church. So another thing I want you to know is this. When you hear something prophetically, when somebody tells you something prophetically, he's only given that person to tell you or God has spoken to you in part. He didn't give you the whole story. You feel me? So he's not going to always give you the whole story you're going to get it in parts see that's the frustrating thing because we get it in parts you know we want to know how many of you like me i want to know the whole story don't don't just give me part of the movie give me the whole thing i i need to know i'm one of those people i'm still gonna watch the movie but just tell me a little bit about what's going on i'm one of those type of people i feel the same way well i don't want you to spoil it i don't care i'm gonna watch it myself and i'm gonna get my opinion after i watch it amen I'm one of those types of people. I don't really care about the whole semantics. Tell me. You know, some people, they don't want to be spoiled. They don't want to spoil the ending and all of that. But it is what it is. I don't care. I'm still watching. Because based upon what you tell me, I'm going to decide if I'm going to watch it or not. That's just how I am. Amen. So the word of the Lord for this year, church, is uh, it is the year of exposure. The year of exposure, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is the year of, uh, of what has been hidden is coming to the light. Coming to the light. I want to first start off by giving you a, a, a prophetic snapshot of the year. Amen. First things first, I want you to know this. 2024 will be one of those up-tempo years where things are going to be happening so fast. That's why you need to pray earnestly and be in tune with the Holy Spirit concerning the pace of grace of your life. What I mean by this, let me just make this in layman's terms for you to understand. What I'm telling you is, is that from here on, you're going to feel it because we're coming, the world is coming into one of the biggest moments that is left to come. Things are going to be running fast. You look up, oh my God, we're in Christmas already. We just celebrated the new year. That's how things are coming. It's becoming hard to discern the seasons. Yeah. Now it actually you want to see some flurries outside. It ain't been doing that for most of this winter. Now we want to see flurries. We can't determine what's going on. Things are happening so fast. Culture is changing so fast. Things are moving so rapidly at any given moment. And you got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that sometimes you can feel lost in the sauce. 
like, well, okay, all right, all right, this is this the next trend, like, I gotta hop on that now, and then I gotta do this, no, you have to find the pace that God has put you in, no matter if the season is up-tempo, there are going to be moments in this year where you're going to have to be at up-tempo pace. Then there's going to be moments where God is going to have you pause for a second. And the frustrating thing is when you come from a fast season or a fast moment in the, in, in, in the part of the year to things slowing down, because when things slow down, then you feel like you're not doing anything. But you have to realize that those slow down moments is to get your breath so that you can run on. If you don't understand what I'm saying to you. So here's what my instruction to you prophetically is that God's given us. It's Psalm 90, verse 12. We, it's the Psalm of Moses, and he says, So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. You need to gain a heart of wisdom for this year. Not only is for a year, but for life period. You need to understand the pace of grace that God has on your life. You need to understand that it is all going to vary at different moments. You have to be ready when God wants to kick you in overdrive. You got to be ready when God tells you, hey, I need you to wait for a second. Because when God tells you to wait, it's always 99.99 uh, or 100% of the time, there is something that you don't know that is being worked on that is that needs to develop or mature or you need to mature before that door opens. No, God does not expose anything until it's ready. I'll say that again. God will not expose those until they are ready. God, you're ready versus God's ready are two different things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You may feel like you're ready. You may feel like it's time. But God saying, no, 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 no. There's a couple things you still got to learn first. Because when you do go through those doors, when the light does appear, because it's not that God does not have that for you. You have to understand that God is not making up things on your life on the spot. Are you hearing me? He's not. He don't do what we do. Make up stuff on the spot or try to do that. No, God's he knows your end from your beginning. And so there's certain things that he knows along your journey that you need for that next Lord, that next level. There's certain things you need for that journey in order for you to be ready for that relationship or ready for this. There's certain things you need to know. So you must ask God to really help me, help me, teach me by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not just there to help you rock a Mashiach. The Holy Spirit's job is to lead and guide you into all truth. That means is that there's a truth. Who else knows the mind of God uh, except by the spirit? The spirit of God is in us so that we can understand the heart of God, so that we can have the heart of his wisdom, so that we can move in the wisdom of God for our lives. So hear me and hear me good. We're in a year of exposure. You're starting to see how God is bringing people one at a time. And they're coming in and they're getting connected. All because is that we're coming into a place where the church has reached a level of maturation where God can open up such things. But then when God opens up things, you need God to teach you how to manage the season that you find yourself in. Because you can, it can also become exposed that when God opens a door, when God opens a time, and it can also come exposed that you didn't prepare. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Exposure works one or two ways. Either you're going to be exposed that you were ready and that you took your season of preparation seriously, or it's going to expose that, hey, you ain't ready. Sometimes God will give you a little sneak peek. Give you a little sneak of a sneak peek of things, seeing seeing how things go and to see how are you able to handle just the little that influx that you're getting. Yeah, yeah. Say, Lord, help me help to number my days. Help me how to maximize my days. That's the thing, maximizing your days. Just because you're busy don't mean that you're maximizing the day. You can be busy doing the wrong thing. You can be busy trying to make up because of what you feel that you lonely or you don't want to ever sit down. You got people who do, they just got to always be on the go. That's just how they are. That don't mean they're being productive. They just busy. They just busy bodies. They always got to have your hand in something. I don't want to be a busy body. I want to be a productive body. I want to make sure that when I, when I am busy, that I'm busy doing what is the most productive thing for me to do for what I am called to do. Sometimes we are not called to do certain things and we have our hands on stuff and you're trying to figure out why you're tired. Your hand shouldn't be on it. 
Just because you can do it don't mean that you should do it. Just because the opportunity's there don't mean that I need to take the opportunity. You feel what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so that's one thing. Another thing is, too, I want you to understand that in this year, financial stewardship is, is even more, it's becoming more extremely important. It's always been important, but I want you to understand something, how important it is right now. The middle class is getting destroyed. I'm not here to make this a political thing. I'm here to tell you the real. There's legislation that is coming down the pipeline this year that is going to make it hard even for those who are making 100 figures. You feel what I'm saying? It's going to make it hard for them. And you're like, man, I finally reached this. You got to know that you're not living in the same climate that our parents grew up in or our grandparents. Yeah. It's a different day. You hear what I'm saying? It's a different day. Pause for a second. Young man, come here. What's up, bud? How you feeling? Sleepy. Where are you from? I'm from Bowie. You from Bowie? How you find out about us today? Stumble upon us. You can see what's going on. Yo, I stopped my message because the Lord wanted me to pray for you. All right, bro, you're a gifted young man. You know that. You're gifted. All right, what you say? No, that's what I thought. You're gifted. You're talented. What you want to do with that? You don't know. So unsure. This is for you. I'm praying that God. Uh, the reason why I stopped right there before I gave my point. Is because you need what I just told you. You need to ask God to teach you how the numbers will work. You need the wisdom for what you need to do. That's what's going to separate you from all the rest. Friends, all of that. Because while they're trying to figure and just test the waters and stuff like that, you're praying. That's the sauce. It's praying. Seeking God's face so that you can get the understanding for tomorrow. You get what I'm saying? As you pray and make it out of priority, the Holy Spirit will give you wisdom on what you need to do and how to use your gifts and maximize your gifts for the glory of God. You know what I'm saying? Does that resonate with you? Yeah? All right, man, let me pray for you. Lord Jesus, I pray for him. What's your name? Jeremiah. Jeremiah? Ah. I pray may the word of the Lord be um, like fire shut up in your bones as Jeremiah. I pray that God will give you wisdom, that he will give you the grace to maximize your days. How old are you? 16? Yeah. I'm going to pray for you now. That's why I need to pray for you. Lord Jesus, I pray, God, that even with all that's going on, I pray right now you give him wisdom, you give him understanding, give him discernment in Jesus' name. I pray, oh God, that he would surrender his whole life to you, even now, in the name of Jesus. Understanding, oh God, that that's what's going to separate him, oh God, from all of the rest in Jesus name understanding that he understand that he is different he's not like everybody else the anointing of the Lord is upon him and I pray God may you give him his favor may you give him your favor and your, and your peace in the name of Jesus and I pray for his household that you would bless his household in the name of Jesus I don't know what they stand in need of but I pray God that you would touch them as only you can in Jesus name amen God bless you man love you Sorry, y'all. I had to do that. It's important. The word of the Lord in, in, in people's lives are more important than what I have to say. Get this out. All right, so I want y'all to pay close attention to the financial industry. What's going to happen is, y'all, and I want y'all to hear me. What's going to happen is that the middle class, there's legislation coming that's going to be tough on us. But there's opportunity in the midst of it all. I want you to hear me. There's opportunity in the midst of it all. Now, just because the economy of the world is a thing don't mean the economy of God is. However, let me hear you. Let me, let me help you understand something. But financial stewardship is what's going to help you navigate the season. Now, I say this to tell you that I'm going to be having different type of financial advisors coming to you this year. Why? Because some of you need to be getting prepared for making investments, putting your money away, understanding trust, understanding those things that's going to help you 
four down down the uh, down the hall. Cause let me tell you something. For those of you who are under thirty and all that stuff, don't worry about no SSI. No SSI. It ain't gonna be there. Under thirty five, it ain't gonna be there. So I'm telling them to get you equipped now for what we gonna face. That's why it's gonna take us being wise with how we spend our money and making sound investments getting ourselves ready to invest in these properties. You want to know why? Because guess what? Big banks are starting to invest in the housing market and that's why the housing market is in influx as it is. I'm telling y'all, not only that, but you're going to see this year how big some of these banks are going to be exposed for unfair practices this year. That's why you need to be wise about where you're going to put your money in. Because I'm telling you, you gonna hear something about hear my, hear me. You might hear something about Wells Fargo and the church banks with Wells Fargo. So I'm about to be moving our money out of there. <laughs> it's already happened a little bit with them, but that's only half of it. Only half. I'm trying to tell y'all, get yourself prepared. Now uh, let me let me let me let me get, let me move to a more. Let me bring it to the church at large for a second, right? Now, I must, listen, hear my heart. It's not really my heart. It's the heart of God. I want you to understand something. There's going to be more exposed in this year that you need to prepare your heart for. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Men and women of God should not be your God. And if that is, and if that's where people are in your life, you're always going to be disappointed. You get what I'm saying? Again, nobody is perfect. But there is a way in which we should carry ourselves when we stand behind this sacred desk or when we're ministering to anybody. Why? Because we have our assignment is we serve God. We're workmen of God. Not only just the people, not only the people on the stage, but you. You are also a workman of God. But in this year, prepare your heart because you're going to see more prominent people become exposed. And your heart may feel a certain type of way and you'll make it about God and it's not God, it's just the flaw of man you get what I'm saying? And you're going to see that but you have to understand the why God is allowing certain things to happen it's because God is purging out a certain group or sector of different organizations and leaders that have had the mercy to get it right but now because it's becoming a hindrance from God's eternal plan of seeing people come and receive his son, he has to purge that out so that the real ones can come forward. Amen. Amen. What am I trying to tell you? The purging is happening within the church. Just because we live under grace don't mean God ain't going to purge his bride. Those he loves, he also convicts. And if they don't receive the conviction of the Lord because it's standing in the way, again, God's plan has not changed. It's for people to come to repentance. Time is winding down. It's not a fire brimstone message. It's the truth. Time is winding down. And our job is to empty hell and fill up heaven, but we can't empty hell and we looking like hell. Huh? They not impressed by that. You need to give people what it is. It's the truth of God's word. God ain't changing for you. God ain't changing because you think it's unfair that you got to believe in his son to come to Christ, to come to come to eternal life. You don't set no rules. God don't care about if you if you in a, in a particular life. Like, listen, God don't care if you're in a particular lifestyle and you haven't struggled with that and all of that stuff like that. And you think God's going to bend it for you. He ain't doing that. He's not going to bend it for you. But he gives you the grace to wrestle with all of that so that you can have victory in him. And I'm telling you here, at TCF, we will continue to be a place where people will wrestle with their faith so that they can see transformation in Jesus Christ. You and I are not God. We connect them to the one that is able to do all things. That's what our vision here is, to connect lives to the transforming power and love of Jesus Christ. You are to connect. You are not to rebuke. You are to connect. You are not here to condemn. You're here to connect. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
So God is making room, especially in the Western culture. It's a lot of junk going on in, in, within, our, within these churches. And we want to make sure as a people of God that that don't get exposed in here. That's why I want to keep myself at the cross because it can happen to anybody. Because guess what? It can happen to you. Just because somebody in the limelight don't mean that you ain't there. Are you hearing what I say to you? All right. So let me keep on moving forward because I got somewhere to go. We're almost finished. Here's my word of warning to you, and I got to spend some time on here. This is what the Lord told me. Tell the people to be watchful and prayerful as they walk in the light. Many will want to he, uh, uh, many many will want to come to your light, and we must have discernment concerning those who come with flattering words and would try to seduce you and compromise your momentum. I want to hear you, all my singles in the room. I want to talk to you. I'm telling you now, when you walk in the light and you walk in your anointing, that's attractive. I tell all my pastors that who was under me, I tell them, especially my single pastors, I tell them, listen, when you in the anointing and you preaching, trust me, it's really attractive. Some person can be ugly and they still like, oh, man. You just see him in another light. <laughs> Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Brothers, man, she up there, man. She's singing under, anoint, under that anointment. To make you feel a certain way. Bro, she can sing. Man, I wonder what she was, you know. Did I say a lot? Oh, man, y'all need to tell the truth up in here. Y'all need to tell the truth. See, that's why y'all ain't ready for no exposure. You ain't trying to be real. You ain't trying to be honest. Thank you. This is, uh, I'm telling y'all now. Then not only that, y'all, but then as a ch but then as a church, y'all, people gonna come here and they give us these flattery. Oh, y'all the best thing and all of this stuff like that. And, Again, if you don't got your if you don't got your ego in check, you are gonna start drinking from the well of flattery. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I need you to watch that. If you're not mindful of that, if you are not mindful of your devices, you will always fall. Come on, come on. If you're not mindful of what trips you up, you will always fall. If you know that he can or she can say the right thing, they just need to say that one thing, you need to work on that. Because let me tell you something, the soothing of words, I'm telling you, the enemy's good with wordplay. His wordplay is strong. How you think Eve fell in the garden? Wordplay. Did God really say that? Wordplay. Make you think he said something different. Wordplay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got to be careful. I'm going to give you some Bible for this, and I want you to write this down. Uh, uh, Psalm 12. Psalm 12, verse 2 through 4. I'm giving it to you right now. And we're going to read what the, the, the what it said. Neighbors lie to each other. Speaking with flattery lips and deceitful hearts. Just because somebody's flattering you don't mean that their heart is in the right place. Because you have to understand that a lot of the flattery is full. Some of that flattery is not saying that you can't take compliments. It's saying be mindful of people or be mindful of those flattery lips. And be really, it is, it's all encouraging us to be discerning of these individuals. Because everyone that speaks well of you doesn't mean that they really have their, your best heart and intention. There's a lot of times, if again, you're dealing with a person and they give you flattery lips and, and, and you speaking well of them because there could be some other thing that they want. Ah, that's it, that's it, that's it. You, you can go home and, 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 and think about it. Ponder what I'm telling you. <laughs> Let it marinate for a second. Here we go. May the Lord cut off their flattery lips and silence their boastful tongues. Verse 4, they say we will lie to our heart's content. Our lips are our own. Who can stop us? 
Some people are so egotistical that they are narcissists that they think ain't nothing you're going to. I can keep saying what I'm going to say because you're going to keep on falling for it. Every time. Because in their hearts, they have already decided, I'm going to keep lying. There's some people, let me tell you, who come with the intent in, 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 in churches that just want to sow discord. That want to sow, you can start off well, but when you allow people because you didn't gotten, you didn't took the juice. You start drinking the juice. And you start getting beside yourself. You start getting beside yourself. What I'm trying to tell you is, ladies and gentlemen, that is when you make those decisions, when you're getting beside yourself, you got to realize, ladies and gentlemen, that, listen, you got to bring yourself back. Because a lot of things what people try to expose and all of that stuff of what's going on, and you got to realize, ladies and gentlemen, that guess what? When you get into the light, there's different people that can come into your light. That's it. That's it. You get what I'm saying to you? Yeah. It, it attracts all kinds of people. Church definitely attracts all types of people. That's right. That's right. You get what I'm saying? You're going to see all kinds. All, I've been in church a long time. I've seen them all. all and I still don't think I'm done seeing them all. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, the, the, the folk are, 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 are interesting, interesting, for lack of better words. But I'm trying to tell you what happens is when you do not when you're not careful, you will la- allow people to slow up your momentum. Because yeah. some people don't like you being in the light. Some people don't like to see you living in wholeness. Some people don't like you living, uh, 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 they like you being stress-free. They like you being bogged down. They like that. They don't want to see. How, how is it every time it works like clockwork where you feel like you're talking to somebody, I'm talking about in relationship aspect, where you're talking to somebody and then all of a sudden you get a text, did you miss me? Come on. Come on. W-I-D. <laughs> what you doing? Long time. Come on, come on, come on. You up? And if you get in that text, you need to need that. You don't need to be responding to that. No, I'm not up. I'm telling you, get your feels under control. I'm telling you, it works like clockwork. You're doing good. You you've been gotten back. Your heart has been mended after. Come on. Come on. Then all of, sudden, all of a sudden, see, they know what to say. Because you like that flattery. There you go. They know what to say. Get back in. Yes, I'm up. What you doing? See, you done already lost. You done already fell. And that's exactly why, because you ain't reached a place of maturity. And that's why that door has closed to you. Because you're not ready. Say, help me, Lord. (laughs) I'm trying to tell you. Get ready. My grandmother used to always say this, and I live by this. She said, in the most G-rated way I will say it, don't allow, you know, don't get caught up in the praise of the people. Because the same people that praise you and flatter and give you all of these things are the same people that will take that knife. And stab it right in the back. You get what I'm saying? That's why you have to be careful of that. Not to say you can't take compliments and all of that stuff. You have to watch how it does it to you, how it, how those words, what it does to you. You get what I'm saying? Because sometimes we'll get juiced up on it. Nothing wrong with it, but just be careful. Amen. Church, be careful. Just because they tell, oh, Pastor, you preach so good. Okay. Thank you. Could all be the glory. I'm just a little humble servant. <laughs> just trying to live my life. That song, I'm just a nobody. <laughs> trying to tell everybody. <laughs> <Y'all done. laughs> yeah, you know that's on Mr. Mika playlist in the car. You know that's on Spotify. <laughs> Woo. Wow, oh my God. I am laughing. Listen, 
I'm coming to a close. Here's some things that why God has given this word for us directly, TCF. I want to tell you why. Because we've reached a level of maturation. And God is bringing us into the light. Let's go to Isaiah and I'm coming to a close. Isaiah says, arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. It's time for you, as Pastor Dom said, to arise. You've been low too long. It's time to come to the light. The light has come because Jesus has come. What I like what Pastor Dom said last Sunday is he said this already in assurance of what was to come. This is done in the past tense. He's saying past tense, arise and shine for your light has come. And he didn't say while this is a prophecy, it's a messianic, really a messianic prophecy. And it's in, 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 in it's 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 going to be done in a future time. But we're not replacing us with Israel. What we're doing is taking the principle of what is being said here. The principle applies to every believer that we can arise and shine for our light has come. That the glory of the Lord has risen upon those who have made him their God. And as, the, as it has it arise on us, we have no other choice but to walk in the light. <laughs> Hear me. You can dim a light, but you're still light. Light can be dim, but you still light. No matter how you try to blend, if we cut all the lights off and we had a dimmer right now, ladies and gentlemen, you will still see a speck of light in a dark room, even if it's dim. It. What I'm trying to tell you is you cannot avoid the inevitable. You are light, That's so it. be the light. Why be dim when I can be bright? And it's not me who's bright. It's the brightness of the Holy Spirit in me that is what shines bright. So why do I have to dim my light? Don't allow, let me help you understand something in here this morning. Don't allow anybody else's insecurity make you dim what you are and who you are because they are insecure about themselves. My confidence may rub your insecurity the wrong way, but you can become secure. All you need to do is walk into the light of who you've been called to be. Say, I hear you. I'm not dimming my light. I'm not dimming my light to fit in because I'm not meant to fit in. I'm not dimming my light because I have a responsibility to walk into the light of God of which he has saved my life. It's my responsibility to live in the light. Are you hearing me? God is bringing us into a season of exposure. It's going to be supernatural. We're coming into more light, and that requires us to live and be the light and not to live dim. (sighs) We're tired of, everyone wants to talk about we're hypocrites in the church. Not all of us. There's not, we're not just, we're not trying to be dim. And you can't, you don't have to be dim. When you're dim, you're lukewarm. You don't know what you want to be. You don't know if you want to be all the way on or if you don't want to be on at all. And no matter how much you try to not bring your light, your light, because it's dim, even worldlings can tell that, listen, you, you, you ain't real. You don't belong here. You different. You didn't change. <laughs> you don't even really belong with us, though. I mean, we like you because you got some money and we broke, but listen. You'll marinate on that later. This is what I'm trying to tell you. You can't dim. You're not meant to be dim. God didn't put his spirit in in us so that we would be dim. No, he put his spirit in us so that we can be bright. So that it will bring people to his light in you. All right, well, let's go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. And it says this. uh, and And it reads, and it says, let's see here. There we go. And it says this, you are the light of the world like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. He said, you are the light of the world like a city on a hilltop. When you're on a hilltop, it's noticeable for everybody. He said, I'm making you cities of light that can shine and be on display. Because I'm not trying to hide you. I want people to see what the salvation of the Lord can do in somebody's life. 
I'm not trying to cover you up. I'm trying to show the world how I can be light and how God has, oh my God, is working on me. And you can see that the same God that's working on me is going to work on your life. God didn't put you on this earth to hide. He put you on this earth to shine. Look at somebody say, I'm meant to shine. I'm meant to shine. Why are you so afraid to shine? Why are you scared of your own shadow? Get yourself up and let the light shine through you. What's he talking about? You afraid of what you can be because you're trying to stay in the dark. Look at somebody say, get out of there. Get out of there. Oh, my God. Oh, he said, listen, you are the light of the world like a city on a hilltop. I'm not trying to hide you. You feel inadequate because I don't know, Lord. I don't want me in front of people and then thinking I'm holier than thou. You are. He said, be holy for I am holy. And it ain't that deep neither. The word holy only means to be set apart. That means because you are a city that's set on a hill, Todd, that means you set apart. You in a kingdom of the oh my God of God. And that kingdom ought to set apart from the kingdom of darkness. You shouldn't be, if your testimony around people that they are so comfortable to do what they do around you, then you might not be light. If in some way that my, my being around you is not able to want you to think differently about life, yeah, yeah. then I'm not doing what I need to do. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm, here to, I'm here to grow you up. Grow, grow it's up. time. Listen, I'm get, listen, I, I'm, listen, I need a church. I don't give a rant about all the numbers. What I care about is if I can just get a 50, 60 some people who can be on fire to say, listen, I'm here to live out what I've been planning to do. I'm not here to glee on the cover up or none of that stuff. No, I'm here to shine. I'm here to do what God called me to do. I'm here to take the world and do what I need to do in my sphere of influence. I may not be with a lot of money. and hey, don't take that. That doesn't make me who I am. No, 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 no. What makes me who I am is walking out the plan of God and that's what my mission is in life you need to be like Jesus and said my will or my food is to do the will of the father of him who sent me you think too low of your impact you think too low of your influence so what if you've been called to be a mother be the best mother you can be so what you've been called to be a father be the best father you can be if you gotta sing and anoint and be the best singer and do it under the glory of god if you are good in graphics and design and being a help then do what god has called you to be You see what we need? We need help in this church. We need people with the gifts of help. The gifts of administration. Don't think so low of yourself. I didn't think I would take it this far, but I feel you now, Holy Spirit. Because somebody need to wake up out of their sleep. You need to realize who you are. Hallelujah. And come into the light. And stop, don't stop being afraid of the light. But yeah, you're going to get different people coming to your life. Yeah, everybody ain't going to always appear to be right they are. But guess what? I'd rather be in the light than to be living in the dark. I'm not living to be noticed. I'm living for people to notice what my God is. Born to be different. I didn't come to conform, I came to transform. I didn't come to be like you. I came to the man be in Christ. He's a new creation. And the old. All right, sit down. I got to listen. I don't care. I promised the Lord. I said, it don't matter if I don't get to live the whatever length or time. Or, it wasn't a promise, but I'm going to be impactful in whatever time I got here. It's not in the length of your life. It's in the impact of what you do while you're here. You think that you're promised to live the CC. When people say, oh, we're promised seven score. No, it was not a promise. 
not a promise. If that's so, then God will lie. If people don't make it there. He never promised that. That's why Moses said, teach me how to number my days. I don't know my days. That's why I need to be taught. Hear me. I'm to be light. Here's what I got to give you. I feel you, Holy Spirit. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here we go. Verse 4. I need you to see this in Isaiah. Because it hit me like a ton of bricks this week while I was in my bed of affliction. Here's what it said. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your son shall come from afar and your daughter shall be nursed at your side. Here we go. Verse 5 says this. And it says, no, I stopped at verse 4. Now listen. Here we go. Here we go. Verse 4, it says, lift up your eyes. Here's the thing. The Lord gave me this so, so clearly. Here's the principle of it. Because they were feeling so oppressed and all the other verses, and all the, other, the, the chapters before they get to 59, 59 is starting to be the starting point of a different tone that God starts to give the prophet, right? Because they were in rebellion, they were in captivity and all of this stuff. But God's saying, listen, I'm pointing you to another way. Listen, you may be captive now because of your disobedience and time is going to be what it's going to be. You're not coming out of it until you until I'm ready right until you understand from your ways but listen there's a time that's coming that you're going to arise and shine for the light has come and the glory be risen upon you and the gentiles will going to come into your light all of that stuff but guess what here's what's going to happen some of you are not going to know that you're in, in the season of exposure because your eyes are down because you don't feel, you're not living with hope for a, or expecting a better result if your eyes are down you are not able to see what God is doing around you. TCF, look around you. Look at the seeds. Look at what is happening over there. Look at how God on December 30th, hey, they moved them out of there. Look around. Look with your eyes. Lift your eyes and see the salvation of the Lord. See you looking down because you don't expect nothing. You don't think that things are going to get better for you. All you got to do is lift up your eyes. Open your eyes. Open your eyes to see spiritually what is happening in the spirit realm before it even happened in the natural. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not. I don't got to see it to believe it. I didn't see that the wall was coming down. I just told you to point your hand there. I didn't know what their lease was. But then you get a it coming down because I could see by faith. God allows when you have the spirit of God in you. He illuminates to you and exposes you to truths that is found. He reveals his secrets to his friends. And you are a friend of God. But you just got to open your eyes. And you got to see. Lift up your oh my God. Lift up your head. Oh, ye case. Oh, my. And be ye lifted up for the king of glory. Shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty and powerful. It's our time for exposure, church. Look with your eyes. See, I got to come to close. It's time. I got some more to say. I'm going to stop right here. Hallelujah. Look with your eyes. See. See. I knew I was under attack. I knew I was under attack because I knew what was about to happen. I know what we're walking into top of the year crazy stuff already happened because I'm so closer than what I've ever been hallelujah hey! <laughs> you don't got to tell me twice I did because of my experience with God and walking with him I just know when the enemy wants to raise his head because the goal is to 
Get me to keep looking down and not looking around. Lift your eyes up. Why are you, why, why are you feeling that way? You got to keep walking in faith though you don't see it. Because you have to understand my faith is telling me the door, I'm walking to the door. I don't see the door, but I'm walking to the door. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, you got to understand. I want to imagine something. Imagine with you were for a second. Listen, I can be in the dark, but the word of God is a lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. You don't stay in the dark with God because the more steps you take and you step in the word, the more light appears. <laughs> light is appearing on my journey as I'm walking ahead. See, the lies that think God is trying to keep you in the dark. No, he's trying to make you walk in his word so that the light can keep illuminating your path. <laughs> you stay in the dark because you want to stay in the dark, not because God is trying to keep you in the dark. Though you may prophesy in part, he'll give you the part so that you can walk in faith on the part he gave you. So that the light can just continue to illuminate. And you say, oh, this makes sense why I'm connected to this person. This makes sense why I'm with this person. It starts connecting the dots. As you walk into the light, stay near your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord right there. I said praise him. Lift up your eyes. When you lift them, you can praise him. Hallelujah. When you lift your eyes, you can praise him for what you don't see. For what you don't see. Hallelujah. I don't know where the money coming from for that, but my eyes, all my eyes are fixed. It's lifted up, lifted my eyes to where oh my God to Jesus where is Jesus he's high and lifted up that's why I'm fixing my eyes cause he's not on where I'm at he's in another realm high exalted and oh my God it is as he exalted he said that if you exalt him he'll draw men unto me you don't gotta kiss nobody's tail to go where you're going cause the light is just gonna open up the door you don't gotta worry you just gotta walk in the light cause the Bible says your gift may room for you say I'm coming into the presence of great men and women this year I'm coming into the presence of great men and women this year because my gift is making room for me it's making room so where there was no room room is being made I don't need it for it to be clear all I need is just a little step and I'm gonna take it with all I got trying to get this through to you 
It's because, listen, this is not to hype you. It's to put fuel in your tank to do something with what I'm telling you. the fuel to do something with this word blessed are those who hear the, the, the word but are doers of the word this ain't gonna mean nothing to you if you just take it and say man pastor really preached I don't care if you thought I preached or not what you do with it God gonna look at you and he gonna ask you you like well you know what believers we get judged we don't get judged in the same way as unbelievers do but God going to ask you, Tamika, what, I, what you do with the time I gave you? What you do with the gift I gave you? The parable of that talent was that one got one, one had, uh, what, had five, one another had two, and another had one. And because he thought God was cruel, that man with the one hid that talent. Because he didn't want to expose it, because he, he didn't think what he had was enough. And he tried to blame it on the character of God because of you feeling inadequate. The Bible says to each and every single last one of us, he's given you a measure of faith. You got something on the inside of you. I refuse to pastor a church who gets high on the word and don't do nothing. You know why jealousy and envy is created among a community? Because they're jealous of other people doing something with the word. And talk about, well, they got a better fair share than I did. Well, we all got the same God, right? Yeah. I'm going to tell you, you use that line on anybody who got to say, I didn't come from the best family. Well, it don't matter. We all got the same God, right? Well, he loved you more than, well, here, aha, that's where your problem is. Because you think God loved me more than you. God don't got this favorite one, this favorite, no. He loves us all the same. His favor is for all the same. He reigns on the just and the unjust. The Bible says he's no respecter of persons. The same favor God has given me is the same favor that is allotted to you. You're not, I'm not better because I'm a pastor. You're the same. sorry I took too long with this but you need to understand what the word what God is trying to tell us he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit of the God is saying to the church this is what he's telling us he's telling us this he's telling us to move in the favor of God move be the light for your light has come your light has come Lift your hands to heaven and just begin to worship him right where you are. Hallelujah. We're getting out of here. afraid to speak it ain't your words you know what there's prayers that you are unbeknownst about that you don't know that people have been praying for you in the area of coming into and I don't like saying this a lot but this is what the Lord told me in the area of ministerial calling you know it I know it you've heard it been said but she ah oh, nah I got to do my own thing that ain't me Stop trying to dictate to your creator what you're going to be and what you're going to do. Hear me. He's saying you're coming into the season of exposure, but your maturation has to come up. 
to the door God has for you in the name of Jesus. The reason why you're facing certain battles and certain things that feel like hindrances is because God is saying, when are you going to wait and learn? It is me that is organizing your steps. I don't care about what was and what happened. I'm talking about the now and the present because there's a future on your life. I'm calling you into the future. Stop saying that, oh God, I did this, who cares? There's a lot of people did a lot of things in scripture. That don't stop God from using them. What you afraid of? What you got to lose? I'll tell you what you got to lose. Your fear, your pride, that's worth losing so that you can be all God calls you to be. Hear me. You make a choice to step into it, and I guarantee you, life is going to start making sense of it all. Even when trouble comes, it's not going to really, it's not going to phase you because you understand that turbulence only comes to those who are going up, never down. Yeah. When you're going up, you face a lot of turbulence. A lot of turbulence when you're going up. It's one of my, I hate, if anybody know me, I don't like planes. The worst thing I hate in the world is when we going up. That ascension, I don't know about y'all, that just does something to my psyche. I just, I speak in tongue. <laughs> if you ever want to play with me, y'all laugh because some of y'all know. I gotta have a stress ball going up on that ascension plane. My anxiety's high. I'm like, Lord, just come on, let them let's let the plane to let it just mellow out here. Let it balance. But that's my word to you from the Lord. In Jesus' name. I thank you. If you're not saved in this room, I offer you Jesus. We have to go. I offer you Jesus. Listen, he died that you may have a relationship with our Heavenly Father. That if any man calls on the name of Jesus, they shall be saved. Let me tell you, saved. You can't lose your salvation if you really gave the Lord your life. If you want to rededicate your life back to Christ, you can do that as well. He hasn't left you. He's right here with open arms saying, come home. Come home. You need a church family? He can do that for you as well. I would love to serve and be your pastor. What you looking all over the place for? Let me tell you something. It don't take long for people to know where God's putting them in. It's just them that's one keep on trying it like a buffet. Listen, stop dating us. Here, like, get yourself planted. Let's go. We got work to do. Listen, I'm being very upfront this year with y'all. I don't care. I don't got nothing to lose. You may not like it anyway. I'm not with everybody. I'm not everybody's cup of tea. I understand that. I'm not trying to be everybody's tea. I'm only trying to be that for those who I've been called to serve. Amen. If you don't know Jesus, I want you to repeat this prayer after me, and we're going to open the altar up for you if you made that decision to come down. And then not only that, we'll also open up the altar for those of you who decided to make TCF your church home. Amen. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Make me new. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. I acknowledge you died on the cross that you were buried, that you rose again, and you ascended to the right hand of the Father just for me. And today, I'm making you the Lord over my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you said that prayer for the very first time, Pastor Dom is right here. I want you to meet us here. If you need a church home, I want you to meet me down here. Let's celebrate God with you. If you're watching online, let's celebrate God with you. Listen, I know there's somebody in here. If you made that decision, if you made that decision, you can come down to the front and we'll tell you the next steps to salvation and get you plugged in.